Hello and welcome to another episode of Medicine in Small Doses with Dr. Amobi. I'm your host Uju and on this episode we are going to be discussing a very significant topic, infertility. If this is your first time tuning into Medicine in Small Doses, Dr. Amobi is a distinguished general practitioner. He's also a health coach for high net worth individuals, a captivating speaker, a lifestyle medicine consultant, and much more. His expertise in making a real impact on improving the health of people across Africa. Today, we're delving into a vital and often overlooked subject that affects black men in Africa. Yes, black men, infertility. So sit back, tune in, and get ready to gain some valuable insights from Dr. Amobi's wealth of knowledge. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be part of this conversation. Absolutely. Okay, let's dive in because I um, highlighted infertility because sometimes we associate a lot with women, but on today's um, discussion is about men. So we've seen a global decline in sperm counts over the past few decades. Could you shed light on how this trend is also affecting African men? Yeah. um, So... That's that, certainly um, the decline in sperm count um, isn't limited to specific region. Um, in Africa, however, while the research on the altered sperm concentration is limited, uh, we do have insight into you know the causes and risk factors of male infertility. You know the World Health Organization uh, (WHO) estimated about. 20 to 35 million African couples are experiencing infertility. That's quite significant because in the past, there's usually this preconceived notion that people in Africa are, you know, fertile and have Mm -hmm. not experiencing similar issues like people in the West. Um, But if you take Nigeria, for example, the male infertility account for about 40 to 50 percent of the cases mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and and this is quite significant uh, Very. because it's literally more than it's like half almost yeah yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things that you mentioned on introduction is that infertility is usually well reflected on women as the mm-hmm. primary cause but in in the west we know it's about 40 percent in the men 40 percent in women and then 20 percent of we have no idea why. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and most of the data, we're looking into more of the European, US, Western world. But as studies are coming thick and fast from Africa, we're actually seeing that people in Africa are experiencing a phenomenally declining fertility rate to an alarming level. Mm-hmm. And, and and so that's one of the reasons why I was quite excited that we are talking about this today. It's quite an eye-opening um, statistics that you've just highlighted. So could you elaborate on the factors that contribute to this trend of declining sperm counts in African men? Of course. So there are many conditions. So the study, I, I, I'll put it on, on, the, um, on the text in, in our website later on. Uh, so they looked at, you know, what diseases that actually affect fertility, you know, things like malaria, things like certain viral infections. They looked at schistosomiasis, for example. They indicate that men who experience these diseases, it can actually affect their fertility. Um, of course, there are, like, say, for example, in Ghana, there's a, Ghana, there's a study in Ghana that found, you know, that... Most of the prostate inflammation is one of the commonest causes of infertility in their own country. And sexually transmitted infections, genital tract infections also correlate with reduced sperm counts. So that's from a disease perspective, right? Then when you actually look into um, lifestyle factors, it is quite interesting to It was a very interesting read in some of the articles that I looked at because you could actually see why these were contributory factors towards infertility. 
that's fascinating. I've also heard about lifestyle factors impacting fertility. Could you tell us more about how lifestyle choices contribute to male infertility? Absolutely. Uh, lifestyle factors are crucial. The number one is black men, even in the UK, even in the US, and certainly in Africa, are reluctant to seek health care when they experience genital issues of concerns, mm-hmm. right? So people feel reluctant to go and seek help that is going to reduce some of these conditions. Now, regular alcohol consumption. We touched someone alcohol earlier today. I'm struggling to find any statistics in Afri- on alcohol consumption. But mm-hmm. one of the things we're noticing now is this is rising a lot within the middle class community because there's new importation of mm-hmm. alcohol in Africa. And we still have no idea whether or how these Western lifestyle is going to affect people moving forward. You know, we know that smoking worsens sperm counts. In fact, if you're a smoker, you are 60% more likely to experience infertility than a non-smoker. Mm-hmm. That's extraordinary. Nice. And, and, and the reason is most smokers in Africa can even start at a very young age. Another interesting statistic is that, do you know that people... Caribbeans in the UK smoke more than Africans in the UK as well. But in wider Africa, children can actually start smoking. There's no uh, start age or cut off age, you know, from that perspective. So smoking, particularly from a young age, is a bad news, right? So there are nutritional deficiencies in the food that we eat, the food that contain vitamin C, the food that contain vitamin E the foods that contain coenzyme Q10, these minerals are known to improve sperm quality, improve the chances of getting somebody, getting a woman pregnant. Uh, Most of our food lack some of these important nutrients. So now you look at things like weight. We know that the more overweight you are, the less likely you are, you know, you impact your infertility. Lack of exercise impacts fertility tremendously. You know, um, we talked about alcohol and, and smoking. Stress, mm-hmm. stress have a significant impact in um, in sperm quality. So it's very, very important that some of these essential lifestyle practices are looked into to establish in you know, a best way to combat them. Excellent. Thanks for those essential points. And they're really something to consider as the rates are high and seem to be climbing. How about the role of environmental factors? Do insecticides, pesticides, or even skincare products contribute to declining sperm counts? Absolutely. So there was a study they did did in in the US that looked at um, environmental implications of uh, sperm counts. And, you know, most of the substances that have, we call it spermatoxic substances. So these are things that are very toxic to sperm, right? And with the, with an alarming seventy. so I think one of the things I wanted to say to you earlier, I just want to say before I forget, is that about 75%, we've seen about 73% decline in sperm concentration of African men for the past 50 years. So so when they looked at into WHO in terms of, you know, what are the environmental factors that can affect sperm count? Skincare products. Most of the skincare products in Africa, of course, they don't go through any rigorous. form of mm. rigorous checks at all. Yeah. So, um pesticides that we use to kill pests um, can be, mm-hmm. you know, detrimental to your sperm quality. Insecticides, especially in crops and things like that, the new avalanche of foods that are coming from abroad into Africa, right, that our microbiome, the bacteria in our system that govern our DNA have never, ever encountered before, there's so many preservatives in certain foods that are making their ways in, you know, the metropolis of Africa. So we're still encountering how all of this is going to affect sperm quality in, in African nations. Another thing, though, is that we know that some certain foods in the UK and the US and the Western world, they've been 
found to have some estrogens in them. Mm-mm. And estrogens are not very good in men, right? right. Yeah, and mm-hmm. certain foods as well that contain um, some chemicals, mm-hmm. they reduce the testosterone levels <clears throat> in men too, right? So, so if you're a man, it, and if, particularly if you haven't had your own family yet, mm-hmm. It is tremendously important for you to be very, very careful in terms of what you put in your mouth. Exactly. I guess from an African perspective, quick, um, well, you're basically talking processed foods. Yeah. What we call it. So um, for men in Africa who live in the cities now and you're in the supermarkets and there's new kinds of packaged and processed foods, it's just to be conscious that some of these foods contain, as you said, estrogen that isn't something that should be consumed by men so yeah like, like t- take for example um i was invited to give a talk to some of my clients in in nigeria so one of the prominent guys who invited me he, he put me in a nice hotel and i was giving a talk to a bunch of them mm-hmm. um, uh, about in you know, a lifestyle so in the morning we all went for breakfast and what one of the things he said to me was he was so happy to show me off all the delicacies at the hotel, you know, things from baked beans, toasts, white bread from the UK. Mm-hmm. They have, what is that one called again? Uh, bacons and sausages. Yeah, it's full English, they, basically. Yeah, yeah, so. Proper full English mm. breakfast, right? And he was so happy and a very gracious man. He was like, I'm sure you'd be happy to see some of these foods that you people eat over there. Mm-hmm. I just wanted you to know that we equally enjoy similar experience here in the in, in Nigeria, mm-hmm. and and I said to him, sir, do you know that we are running away from big beans? Mm-hmm. You know, and and one of the oh, things yeah. I asked him was, I was like, when was the last time your grandfather ate big beans? He goes, never. I was like, what about your father? He goes, never. I said, this is never in a your body system is not built mm-hmm. to eat bacon to eat so some of these things, yeah. right? So if you're having them more regularly, you'll be killing off some of the important DNA bacteria that is inside you. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's older. It's not going to be suffering from sperm count issues. But this is just to say that some of the lifestyles that if you think that this is a way for you to show success mm-hmm. is like a way to successfully get the diseases that we are running away from the Western world. So I, I would just want that to be um, That's a, a, good point. a warning shot. That's a good point. You know, success is measured in many different ways and sometimes it's measured in what you can afford to eat and enjoy. Mm-hmm. And what doctor is saying is that people are running away from some of the foods that we're seeing as something that, oh gosh, shows us a new status and a new level. And that there is level and status in our own traditional foods and breakfasts. So thank you for that. Um, so clearly this is a multifaceted issue. Mm-hmm. Um, what steps can individuals take to improve their fertility and overall reproductive health? Yeah, so very good question. It goes without saying that male f- fertility is a crucial aspect of family planning and understanding the lifestyle factors that can impact you know, fertility is essential. Um, for black men, wherever you live in the world, looking to optimize your reproductive health, there's several lifestyle changes that can make a significant difference. So we're going to explore um, about uh, seven to ten lifestyle changes that can help improve fertility. Mm -hmm. So my number one on the list is maintaining a healthy weight. You know, maintaining a healthy weight is key to fertility. You know, so both being overweight and being underweight can negatively affect sperm quality and your hormonal balance you know studies show that overweight men are 11 percent more likely than normal weight um, men to produce low sperm count and 39 percent more likely to have no sperm at all and we are seeing quite a lot of men these days having what we call you know a zoospermia like meaning like zero sperms wow um we're seeing oligospermia which is you know, less low number of sperms as well. But that statistic gets a bit worse if you're obese. If you're obese, you're 42% more likely to have low sperm count and over 80% likely to have no sperm at all. Wow, at all? Yeah. But the good news, though, is that they, they did some studies. They looked into these men and they lost some weight 
and they kept the weight off, the sperm quality improved by 40%. That's good. So, that's so wow. that goes to show that, you know, you can do something by, you know, aiming for a balanced diet, mm-hmm. a regular exercise, and achieving your optimal weight. If you're trying to have a baby, there is no best way to do it, to give yourself the best shot than losing weight. And that's such a good turnaround if you had previously been overweight, as you said. The yeah. sperm increase is significant, so brilliant. That's yeah. amazing. No, no, that, that's, 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 that's fantastic. Really you know, so number two yeah. is, of course, eat a nutrient in a dense diet yeah mm-hmm. so up for diet rich in antioxidants you know vitamins minerals so that makes eating plenty of fruits particularly during a season right um vegetables all year round whole grains all year round mm-hmm. you know lean proteins okay and healthy fats so example of healthy fats is like you know, get the avocados. You have a we have an like episode almond. on that as well. Yeah. Okay, we, we can, okay, cool. So we will, we will be able to kind put of up as well. Put a link to that as well. Yeah. Okay. So so because we know that, like I said before, that you know, food that contain vitamin C, vitamin E, you know, coenzyme Q10, all of them are super important because their antioxidants are very useful in its overall reproductive function. Keeping hydrated, and I'm talking about drinking water. I'm not talking about like having like two bottles of Guinness or um, mm-hmm. super malt. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like yeah. water, staying hydrated mm-hmm. um, can improve your, your sperm quality. Avoidance of stress, you know, mm-hmm. um, engaging in stress, stress reduction techniques, things like deep breathing, exercise, meditation, you know, have good friends, you know, mm-hmm. all your phone calls every day is not always like, sorting somebody's problem out or yeah. inheriting somebody's problem just mm-hmm. cover a day in your daily lives that you say you know this is a me time mm-hmm. you know within this hour it's just going to be i'm going to sit down and meditate think things through and it releases your it reduces your stress level significantly you should try it mm-hmm. you know um i've already mentioned about um smoking alcohol earlier so I don't want you to, if you normally drink too much, I don't want you to just suddenly quit. I want you to speak to your doctor and then gradually quit. Mm-hmm. You know, evidence shows that when somebody, when your clinician or a healthcare professional is involved in helping you with gradual progress, you'll be able to quit and stay stay like so. Mm-hmm. So it's very important. So exercising regularly, I'm not going to go so much into that. It goes without saying, mm-hmm. um, particularly for your weight and, and um and your heart health, and every other health, right? So prioritizing sleep. Sleep is crucial because that's when your body have, like, hormone regulation. So, and it's good for your overall well-being. So aim for anything between seven and nine hours each night for optimal health overall. Then environmental toxins. This one, I, I struggle to see how in, in most African countries, there is no regulations in terms of some of the um, skin mm. cares and things like no, that, that's a right? Key so, issue. so it's mm. going to be quite hard for you over there. Mm. And if you can make some, learn how to make. You know, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to put something that it's not achievable in here. But be careful of what you buy. Be careful of what you buy, or try and source um, products that have labels on them that you can at least. Yeah, reference. yeah, Would yeah, and and yeah, and labels from reputable countries mm-hmm. because yeah. certain countries can slap a label onto something right. enormously stupid point. and then send it over to Africa, mm-hmm. um, pretending that it's the legit stuff. So, um, be very mindful. yeah, be very mindful, but try to minimize exposure to environmental toxins like pesticide, heavy metals, and chemicals and things like that. So. Uh, we know that in the Western world, this is the commonest, one of the commonest reasons for low sperm count, and it can affect you too. You know, practice safe sex. STIs can affect fertility. I think this is one of the things that when I see people in clinic, they, because we tend to postulate, when it comes to sexually transmitted infection, we know that, okay, it affects women, it can affect their fallopian tubes, it can affect them tremendously. And there's this false belief that men will go scotch-free. That's not true. Mm-hmm. We know that STIs causes inflammation in your testicles and stuff like that that can affect your sperm count. All right? 
the important things as well is, you know, what you wear. We know that like cycling for longer than three hours mm -hmm. uh, can reduce your sperm quality because it heats up that area. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the one of the most beautiful thing God created, the way God created men mm -hmm. is such that the part of your body that makes sperm hangs outside, mm -hmm. all right? And this is because the temperature of that area needs to be a bit different from the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a very, very special curated you know, um, part of your body that if you always heat it up most of the times, mm -hmm. right? So you sit and you're driving for long, you know, you're cycling a lot, you know, you're wearing very tight pants, they can actually affect your sperm quality no, as well. That's interesting. So, so, so it's it's super super you know important that you you take all of this into consideration. You know, vitamin D. I cannot overstate how important vitamin D is. It's just one of the most important minerals in the body. Make mm -hmm. sure it's optimal. Check with your doctor. Please do not go and buy something without checking you with your doctor because. You don't want an overdose of it, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's like in a nutshell of some yeah. of the lifestyle practices that I would advocate for. And of course, you know, make sure you speak to your doctor about all of these so that they can um, put you in the right direction. Brilliant. Excellent, doctor. Thank you for the insights. It's just amazing how much lifestyle can impact our health in general. Mm -hmm. And especially in this topic, it's been very enlightening. Um, for me, I find it very useful, those statistics. So lastly, how can awareness and education help address male infertility in Africa? By talking about it, mm -hmm. exactly what we're doing right now, yeah, right? Um, we, we have invested the last two hours sitting down here, you know, pouring out some of this podcast, right? Yeah. So if people who listen to this and then you pass it on to your brother, your brother pass it on to your friend, that's how information percolates. Read more. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. There's this quote in the Bible to say that, I think it's Hosea 5.8, mm -hmm. you know, my people are dying due to lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. knowledge is power. It is power. Yeah, so it's very important that you educate yourself. Have a look at your country's guidelines. Mm -hmm. You know, see what is working. Have a look at other countries and see what exactly, what are the practices that people do that they optimize their their overall health, not just your fertility health, right? So you, you, even though fertility, even if you get your fertility, you need to stay alive to look after your newborns, aren't you? Yeah, so, yeah. so, so it's 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 important from that domain. And another takeaway for me is that we have much more control than we realize. Obviously, we can't. We're not in control ultimately. That's God that's in control. However, if we take responsibility for our lifestyle with the key points that you've addressed and raised, yeah. then we can really turn things around. So. We don't always have to be victims of what circumstances and environmental factors. It's just, as you said, educating ourselves and then making a decision to act on the information that you've been given. Given, yeah. And and, and I was just going to touch on this. Um, um, I remember when I was working as a, as a doctor in a town, it's a predominantly Asian community, and a and lady brought her daughter-in-law, um, who they just brought from their native country, and she said, doctor, um, this young lady is struggling to get pregnant. And she wanted to see how she can best support um, mm -hmm. the young lady, right? Uh, so I ran a test on her and all her tests were absolutely normal. So I said to her, you're going to bring your son. And her son came and then we ran tests and then he has a very low sperm count. And this is some of the practices that tend to go on in Africa mm -hmm. where people would expect wives of their sons to be, a to, problem, the, right? yeah, to be like more female problem, you know. And I think if your parent that is listening to this, it's very important that you, you get your sons to listen to this as well because fertility takes two. It's not just one. Mm -hmm. If your son is at risk, well, give them this podcast to listen to. They don't have to listen to this one. Get them to talk to their doctors as well. Mm -hmm. Let's be kind to each other. If your daughter-in-law, whatever, is not able to conceive, be supportive as opposed to condemning them. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen so many people, particularly from our community, particularly from Africa, 
come into clinic and cry their eyes out because some people from the other side of the family have said something derogatory towards them. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out not to be them that is having a problem conceiving. It turns out to be their partners. You know, so I'm not trying to label the men here, but no, I'm just kind of saying like... Th yeah. Problem shares. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so, and 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 the good thing is our generation mm -hmm. uh, all becoming more understanding. Men are coming forward. Mm -hmm. Believe me, in the next in the past five years, I've seen more men coming to clinic to say to me, doctor, I just want to know like my sperm count. Yeah, you know, just... or doctor, what can I do to improve? I want to start having a family in a year. Any mm -hmm. advice? Men are doing this. They're not telling their friends that they're going to the doctors to talk about this thing. But they will sneak in and have a chat. And if your friends are doing it and not telling you, please go talk to your own doctor, mm -hmm. right? If you need any coaching, health coaching from myself, then please reach out, all right? Uh, because it's super, super important that you do this. There's nothing, days are gone when men used to be tough guys. Mm -hmm. Men are coming in now, they're talking about mental health, they're talking about diabetes, they're talking about high blood pressure, they're talking about so many things, relationship how mm -hmm. to be a new dad, you know, yeah. what to expect, how to support your you know, pregnant um, partners, yeah. all of those yeah. things. Men are coming up more. There is men seeking help now is has been a massive eye opener, especially post COVID. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this, please, in the next one month, I want you to write to me to say, I've listened to what you just said and I'll be to my doctor and I've got myself checked out. Yes. If you already get checked out, let us know, you know, are there anything that it needs changing in there, you know, and how you've managed to overcome that so that we can share the news as well to other people to mm -hmm. testify on your behalf too. So, um, so thank you for, for listening. I think that, I think that's, that's, that's great, it, right? Doctor. So you're really the odd one out. Um, if you're a man and you're not taking responsibility for your health, whether that's mentally, physically, or emotionally. And remember, infertility doesn't just affect women. It can and does affect men also. So it's an issue that both parties have to be conscious about resolving together. Thank you so much, Dr. Amobi. That concludes another episode of Medicine in Small Doses. And like we always say, if you enjoy this podcast, please rate and review it on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. That way more people can find the podcast. Please also share this podcast so that people can benefit from the information, the very useful information that's been taught, discussed today. Um, and yeah, remember, understanding and addressing male infertility is the next step towards better reproductive health for all. So stay informed, stay healthy, and until next time, thank you for tuning in.